So as a little FYI, another one of my little ditties, um, I have put my card in my tag in the oven at 200 degrees to help facilitate the drying process because um, molding paste is not, it, it takes some time to dry. And then if you start spraying water on it or you're spraying your mist on it or water or anything, you're going to find that it itself will run. So to kind of hurry up that process, because I really don't have all day for that, um, I have it in my, onion, my oven baking at 200 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some of the other aspects of our card. And I have some linen paper here and a leaf stamp and archival ink. Now the reason that I have chosen to use archival ink, um, and I may have said this before but I'll say it again, is because when archival ink is heat set, it you can apply water to it or you can apply mist to it. Um, so the beauty of it is that you can color these things in. You could use watercolor pencils and spray it with water, but we're going to paint with our mist today. So I'm going to just stamp two of these leaf borders, and this is um, Diane Stamps from Stampers Anonymous. Um, love this stamp. Okay, and then we're just going to hit, hit that with the heat tool, and we're going to cut them out. So the heat tool will help set the ink. And actually, I think before we cut these out, we're going to paint them. Might kind of be a little bit easier to do it that way. Okay, so that's nice and dry. Okay, so I have my stamped images. Um, once again, using the Luminart Radiant Rain Shimmering Mist. This is Spanish Moss. I'm just going to spray a puddle on my craft mat. Then using my paintbrush, I'm just going to get in here and I'm just going to paint my leaves. No rocket science to this. Just painting them. Adding color to them. And just another way that you can use your mists. If you're afraid of spraying with them, well, then we can color with them in other ways. Okay, so now that I have those all painted in, we're going to cut those out. Okay, so I've actually stopped that process. I'm going to just let those sit there for a second because we have this ink that's on our craft mat. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big person that likes to waste um, my ink. Um, so I have two leaves that were cut out of crinoline using the tattered leaves dye. And I'm just going to dip them in this leftover ink. It may not cover it all, but a little spritz of water will help. Okay. And there we have our leaves now. Our leaves are all colored. We haven't wasted a whole lot of ink here. Might give it just a little bit of a spray. Give it a little so that it's a little bit stronger in the green. And there you have it. There's our leaves. So now we can kind of wipe up the excess. Okay, so we're going to cut the, the leaves out, but while we've got these crinoline ones over here, let's take our heat tool to them and kind of dry them. And the beauty of crinoline is when it dries, you can kind of, before it's drying, you can kind of form it. Um, and when it's dry, it will then hold that shape. So surprise, surprise, I always like to crumple everything up. And when you do that and it's wet, you'll feel that it's kind of sticky. But that's okay. That's what helps. Oops. That's what kind of helps it hold um, its shape. All right. So there we've got a leaf. 
Now we'll do my pinch and staple type of deal. There's my oven. Our card and tag is just baking away. Oh, and of course I'm out of staples. Okay, so anyways, you kind of get the idea of that. So there are our leaves. We're gonna cut out these other leaves and we'll come back. All right, so here are our two crinoline leaves. They're hard and they have character going on. Um, here's the first set of leaves that I cut out. And if you notice, um, so much for me cleaning up the ink off my mat if I had really thought the process through, but huh, who does that much of the time? Um, I spritzed a little bit more of the Spanish moss on my craft mat and in order to um, create kind of a shadow I've just added another layer of the ink just to the left sides of the leaves and then that way it just gives it a little more depth and shadow okay so there are our linen paper leaves and then we have our crinoline leaves We've painted, we've spritzed, we've dipped, which actually we can even do that over here with the leftover. Kind of go in and just go around the edges of our leaves, giving it a little slightly darker look to it. So there's all different kinds of ways to use your mists other than just spraying. All right, my leaves are all done. My, my card and my tag are fresh out of the oven, all nice and dry. Okay, so I've kind of changed my card up a little bit. Um, so we're going to see how this works because we are, of course, spraying a liquid through a stencil. Now, when you're using the molding, the molding paste or any type of thick thing, it, does, it doesn't have a tendency to try to seep underneath your stencil. However you are spraying a liquid here. So I have my stencil laid out. Um, I'm going to cover part of the stencil that I don't want to go through. I don't want overspray to come through and then I've got this little checkerboard um, thing going on. So I'm going to cover this and then holding my mist kind of far away, I'm gonna start spraying. Okay, and then we're going to lift this off of here and we're going to see our results. And there it is. And I'm now going to use my heat tool to dry it. And that didn't come out too bad. It's not a really, really sharp image, but then again, we know, I know that this paper doesn't always give you a really, really sharp image. So beings as these items are background items, I'm not going to lose myself in the details about them not being um, really, really sharp. Embrace the imperfection of misting, as I say. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drip some color. So I'm now using Bashful Blue. Of course, you can use any blue that you have. Put up a cardboard to keep my entire work surface from and everything around here from getting sprayed. Um, and that's kind of when one of those little spraying booth things work really well, but unfortunately I don't have one. So we'll improvise. So I'm just going to get kind of close and I'm going to spray rather heavily. Can you see that? With the blue. And I'm just going to let that, actually tapping it, let it run down my card. I actually want a little bit more right there. Okay, so let's dry that. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom, dripping in the other direction. So we're just going to spray. And you will find that drips like to run in similar patterns. All right, so there we have it. We have now dripped. On my first card that I made, I had gone in and outlined um, the leaves, but I'm going to, on this card, I'm going to choose to just leave them as a subtle hint in the background. Okay, so now I've taken my card and I've run it through the Distress It All. Ah, can you tell? I love it. We have our um, tattered floral flowers um, cut from just dictionary pages, and I'm just going to spritz them. 
And I'm going to spritz some more. Each one kind of a little differently. Then we'll take the heat tool and dry those. So I've dried um, my dictionary paper flowers and ha, surprise, they're all crumpled up. I do have a little bit of leftover mist. So we're just going to kind of scoop that up with the edges of our card. So I have my flourish that I cut out. I'm just going to spray that with some ink. And we'll dry that. And once again, we've got this leftover ink here. So we'll just scoop some of that up on our card. I take my finger and just kind of rub it along. And we'll dry our flourish. I really don't like that color. So now we let the building begin. So what I did is um, I have taken this flourish because in and of itself it's almost too big and I'm just going to cut it right here so therefore now I have a bottom part to my flourish and a top part and then we have leaves and we have more leaves We have our dictionary paper flower. Get my handy dandy little awl here, poke a hole in the center of that. Put my Kaiser Brad in the center. Kind of form that. And we've got some leaves. And as you're building this on here, suddenly your background is now becoming secondary to what your focal point is. I think we need a little piece of ribbon on here, a little piece of tied jute. So here we have it, my completed card. And as you can see, once your focal point is all built on the top of it, that that background that you created becomes just that, a background. So I encourage you to pull out your mists and just step outside your box and to just try them. Paint with them, spray with them, splat with them, and just enjoy the creative process. I hope I've helped you, um, and I hope this kind of gets you out of your box. Um, and do play along. I would love to see your creation. Everybody have a wonderful day.